remember a time when anime for me was unpredictable. I never knew what I was getting myself into. There would be a lot of shows trying different things, and I personally enjoyed its variety, even if the shows weren't all that great. I don't know if it's because of websites like Netflix, Crunchyroll, or Hulu, or because I've been watching anime for a long time, but you start to notice a lot of shows with the same presence and styles, and using the same tropes that would make you say, haven't I seen this before? I don't feel like that's necessarily an issue, because people are free to enjoy whatever they please. And that the shows that aren't 100% original still might have something to offer. I feel that the main issue is that there's just so much plain old dirt that it makes it hard to find the gems, the shows that are worth talking about. They seem to be buried deep and don't pop up unless people start talking about it. And that's hard to do if people don't even notice their existence. That's why some smaller companies either have to take a risk by putting something people might not even notice or just make it similar to every other show so that they're guaranteed some sort of profit. Let's just say you are a studio like Madhouse or Toei Animation and you want companies like Funimation and Sentai Filmworks to notice your show and to have a dedicated audience. It can't just be any show. It has to be something unique that you can't find anywhere else that has people taking a second look just to see what you're offering. Something enjoyable enough that has people coming back for more. It's shows like that that made Toonami such a hit, but will it make this Netflix exclusive a hit? Well, seeing that there's a second season coming, it's for sure not a failure. Yet! But let's be optimistic here. What's up folks? My name is Mr. Gomez and today we are taking a look at Knights of Sidonia. Knights of Sidonia, created in 2009, written by Tsusomu Nihel, and published by Kodansha, with the English version being taken care of by Vertical. The anime was created in 2014, was directed by Kobun Shizuno, and the studio was Polygon and licensed by Sentai Filmworks. The show revolves around Nagate Takinaze, who always lived away from civilization, never meeting another human besides his grandfather, until one day, taking a different path, getting lost, and then finding a whole new city. This city is known as Sidonia, and it's basically one giant spaceship in charge of the last humans in existence, and they have survived through perseverance, the future of science, and giant mechs, but we'll get into that soon enough. The citizens of Sidonia are a bit different from people like you and me. One example is that they're able to photosynthesize, meaning that they eat a lot less frequently, once a week to be exact, and these citizens, as far as I can tell, live a normal life when not being confronted by the Ghanas, this mysterious species that roam the galaxy and destroy anything that they considered a threat which, as far as we know, is the human race. So the goal for the show is to defend themselves and to not be destroyed by the Ghanas, or else it's the end of the human race as we know it. So how are you able to take down such strong opponents? I think it has to do with the mechs. Yes, that's where the mechs come into play. And they are controlled by pilots and shocker, Nagate is one of them. I mean, in the beginning of the first episode, you see him in a mech simulator getting the highest score possible. That's called foreshadowing. So there are pilots, but to be the best means that you are a knight of Sidonia. So you have pilots and knights who are to take down Ghanas whenever recruited to do so. Plus, we just have Nagate trying to understand what all of this is with Sidonia and with Ghanas and whether or not they're actually enemies or just misunderstood. Speaking of Sidonia and Ghanas and this huge war thing, most of the civilians actually live normal, peaceful lives and actually don't even think that there's a war going on. And then there are some citizens that think this war is just a conspiracy, man, and that the people who actually died from Ghanas didn't actually die. It's Spoiler alert, they actually did. But again, we're just as lost as Nagate, and the goal for the show is to take down the Ghana so that they don't harm the last of the humans. So on with the characters. I've already explained so much about Nagate, but there is a bit more. After finding Sidonia and after being brought into the captain, the captain saw something in him that made her think that actually he's going to stop the Ghanas and he's actually going to be a phenomenal pilot and for the most part he is. The only issue with him is that he kind of dives in head first and is not really a 
huge team player. Sometimes he is, sometimes he isn't. He basically goes on instinct in terms of his, I guess, fighting style in the Mac. Next, we have Izana Shinatose, who teaches Nagate all about the world of Sidonia, and she's kind of unique because she is actually a brand new gender, which is known as genderless, neither male or female, but becomes male or female depending on uh, the relationship she has. So if her partner is gonna be male, then she becomes a female, and vice versa. Or she just says genderless to become cloned. Captain Kobayashi, who is in charge of the whole Sidonia survival spaceship thing. Just think of her as a president or a dictator, I, I have no idea. But she definitely does not play nice. Since she is in charge of the whole human race, she takes her decision, she does not take her decisions lightly. She takes them seriously and does not second think them and does not really show her emotions much in front of people because she has to stay strong for everyone even if you don't agree with her decision. Now I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how much I actually enjoyed these characters, their personality, their interaction with each other. Honestly, if there was more focus on the side characters, I would actually like them more than the main character. But that's not a bad thing since the main character himself is actually really interesting and he actually has a pretty interesting backstory which you find out in later episodes. But that's, that's just like some of them. I did not even mention the bear. Yes, there's a bear in space. And she can speak human languages. So, psh, blows your mind there. But she's also a caretaker and a chef with a claw. <laughs> that, that's not even explaining her backstory. And she's also high. Wait, what did you say? What? I, I didn't, I didn't. He thinks the bear from Knights of Sidonia is hot. Are you sure? Why are you in my closet? No, I did not say that. He's delusional. He might be doing drugs in there. That is definitely a possibility. All right, all right, whatever you say, weirdo. All right, whatever, line two, I mean round two. I'm, I'm playing Street Fighter, don't, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't worry. The best thing I can say for this anime is just how original everything feels. Not necessarily the story or the plot or the fighting huge monsters with mechs, but like the little things, the history of Sidonia, the details, like <laughs> there are humans that are genderless and then there are humans that photosynthesize that it just brings you into the world. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but it just makes everything seem like its own thing. And it's just those little details that make you enjoy the world a bit more and just makes you wish, wow, I wonder what next they're gonna bring up about Sidonia or the civilians or about the Ghanas. But the animation, oh gosh, the animation. I know there is a split whether people like the animation or hate it. I saw a few episodes with my friends, they hated it. Me personally, I didn't, for the most part, it didn't bother me. Since the show revolves around huge mechs trying to take down huge monsters in space, then yeah, the animation is good. It all seems very awesome and exhilarating seeing these all these mechs trying to take down a Ghana. It, it looks really good. I'd say this is one of the best space fights I've ever seen in an anime. But for everything else, it kind of falls into that creepy factor where something almost looks like natural to a human, but not necessarily. But since it is drawn in a way that looks like a cartoon, like an anime, then it kind of doesn't fall into that creepy factor and kind of does. It's very confusing, but I can say that if you're so-and-so on the animation, still watch the show, but if you just hate the anime and just can't stand to watch it, I understand if you don't want to watch this show. Because uh, watching anime, one of the appeals of watching anime is to enjoy 
like the art form, the way it looks, the color it uses, its environment. So if you hate all of that, then I can understand why you wouldn't watch the anime for it. Not to mention that the Ghana is, ugh, get that off the screen. We all know it's creepy. Thank you. Now to conclude, I am definitely going to give this show a strong watch if you're curious. Definitely a show worth watching if you have Netflix. But if you don't, then you can always buy it on DVD or Blu-ray and I think it is a worthy investment. One of the biggest compliments that I always give to anime when people ask, why do you watch anime? I say for its creativity. They always find a way to make the world intriguing and creative and have its own style. This anime is no different. My name is Mystery Gomez. You've been awesome and until next time. Woo! Who's up for round three? Anyone? All right, more for me.